Uh, so when did Jim Cornette first pitch you to come in uh, that he was thinking of a new promotion? And did you know when Rick Rubin was actually going to be the uh, uh, the secret backer? I was in Memphis wrestling for Jarrett Territories, and Jim called me up after about, uh, gosh, I'd been there a year. Eric Embry was booking. We'd had our run. It was uh, – it was time to go. So Jim called uh, after he had left WCW. The original plan was for the Midnight Express to come back and work their angle with the rock and roll in Knoxville, Tennessee, and just do it all over again. Uh, but Bobby Eaton had just signed a contract. Bobby had a family. He couldn't do that to him. So Jim and Stan decided to leave. And he gave me a call, asked if I would be interested in doing this new venture uh, with he and Stan. Rick Rubin was going to be the backer. We were going to be uh, working out of Knoxville, Tennessee. I've always loved Knoxville, man. I really have. Tennessee is a nice place. Uh, originally, I'm originally from Texas, but Tennessee just uh, a wonderful place to live, wonderful place to visit, wonderful place to train for wrestling, by the way. Anyway, uh, so he called me yeah, early 92, I believe it was. It might have been late 91 uh, when he just he told me about the idea he had. And wanted Stan and I to be uh, the heavenly bodies, and he would be our manager. Well, he had just come off that run from Atlanta, and why not? It was a new territory. I had worked a little bit in Knoxville before. I knew the area somewhat. I I couldn't pass it up. Why would I? Jim Cornette, Stan Lane, uh, the Rock and Roll Express. It wasn't a. It wasn't. Uh, just a job. It was a position in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. So that's that's how that came about. And I'd known Stan before. In fact, uh, it's due to Stan indirectly, but directly, that I became a doctor. Hmm. Oh, so he was he was handing out the uh, diplomas, was he? Well, not exactly. That's that's not exactly what happened. But I will tell you, if we have about I don't know how much time do we have. We have a lot of time, right? <laughs> What is this? So uh, my here, here's here's the irony of this whole deal. My uh, Pat Rose and I were wrestling in Tennessee years ago as the Heavenly Bodies, and we're wrestling Steve Kern and Stan Lane, who are the fabulous ones. And uh, we're in Louisville, Kentucky one night, and I'm on the apron. Stan comes over and hits me and knocks me off the apron, and I feel my ankle twist, but I think it's just a sprain. And uh, we go in, we finish the match. And in Louisville, you have two sets of stairs to go back down to the locker rooms. And so I have to hobble back and I have to go down these two flights. I'm going, I'm hobbling down. We get down. I, I thank everybody. And I think, hmm, I sprained my ankle pretty So I rode with uh, two other guys, got in the back of the car. And uh, the next day, or that night, I asked if I could sleep on the couch. We were all staying in a one or actually two room Dirty hotel room in uh, downtown Nashville, Tennessee, and and just four stinking wrestlers in, in one room you can imagine. So the next night, uh, we wrestle in Evansville, Indiana. The next night's a spot show. Friday night's a spot show. Saturday morning is live TV, so we do that. Now, all the next – from uh, Wednesday to the next Tuesday, I'm having someone tape up my ankle just to be able to put my boot on and uh, – I would go out to the ring, have our match come back. Saturday live TV in uh, Memphis. We drive that night to Nashville, have a show that night. Sunday, I think we're off. We restart Memphis, the house show, go to Louisville that Tuesday. And now my ankles have turned completely black. And it's okay, it's just spring. Sherry Martell was our manager at that time, too. So I go into one of the rooms in Louisville. Someone, I don't remember who was taping up my ankle, and Bill Dundee walked in and said, hey, you might want to get that checked out. <laughs> so no, it's okay. Sherry happened to walk in at uh, about five seconds after Bill, and she said, uh, I'm going to come by tomorrow and pick you up. My roommate is a nurse. We're going to go to the hospital. We're going to get your ankle x-ray. Well, she came by the next morning, and sure enough, my ankle was broke. In those days, there were no guaranteed contracts, no guaranteed pay. So if you didn't work, you didn't get paid. That was just the way the business was. And in Memphis, you were a whole lot anyway. So uh, Sherry said, I'm going to take you back to the hotel, pack your stuff, and you're going to come stay with Tina and me. 
So we went back to the hotel, packed my stuff, and uh, I went back with Sherry. And uh, they were taking care of me for two weeks. And uh, eventually I said, I can't do this. I, I, I had my dad come up with a friend of mine to drive my car back to Texas. And I'm going to go back and recuperate six weeks and come back. In the meantime, Tina had given me some doctor scrubs to wear. It'd be comfortable to have my ankle put up and all that good stuff. Went back to Houston. Brett Armstrong calls me about four weeks in and says, hey, are you planning to, what, to go back to Memphis? What, what are your plans after you heal up? Would you like to come to Pensacola? Of course I would. Give me two weeks. I'll be there. So I go to Pensacola and it's a great territory. One of the best territories I've been to as far as fun, enjoyment, and uh, no stress, just chill. Well, six months into my run, Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden have a great idea. Uh, they're going to bring one of their friends down to ringside as a manager because he wants to be part of the business. And he really wants to do something because everybody wants to be in show business. I'm a star, kid. <sighs> so this fella goes down to ringside. They have a big angle. Robert and Jimmy just beat the living hell out of, I think it was Steve Armstrong and Johnny Rich or Tommy. Could have been one of the two. And uh, the guy at ringside, whose name is Joe Hamilton, um, taped Johnny's feet or one of the guy's feet. And they beat the hell out of blood everywhere. So these three guys go up to the interview stand after the match and Robert goes, that's what's going to happen every time we get in the ring. But this guy right here, he's our cut man. He is, here's Dr. Love. He's going to take care of our pretty face. Ain't nothing going to happen to us. Great angle. People are hot. Next week at the, the TV shows, it airs on Saturday. Sunday morning, Robert gets a call from the FBI in Alabama and says, hey, uh, we'd like to know where this fellow is that you had with you because he's on our top 10 most wanted list. <laughs> and Robert said, oh, hell, we don't know him. They just some of these guys who stop by, when they just get in the ring every now and then. He, we don't see a lot of those guys after the first time. So Robert called Joe and said, Joe, you better lay low right now, pal. So that week, and I started to ride with Robert, Jimmy, and Jerry Stubbs, uh, we're going to Panama City. And we're talking, and Robert's lamenting the fact that he has to cut the angle because we don't want the FBI to come raid our show, boys. Uh, and we're talking, 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 and I happen to be wearing the doctor scrubs. And we get out for a drink uh, at the 7-Eleven, and he looked at me and says, well, wait a minute, boy, you could be our doctor. Ooh, I thought, why not? So that's how I became a doctor right outside of it. <laughs> uh, Being stored, going to Panama City, and that's how I got my shoot skin. Like, what did the FBI want Joe for? Uh, you know, at that time, and, and, and let's just put the puzzle together here, we're in Florida. Um, okay. Of course, we're, in, <laughs> we're, in, we're, in, we're on the, the west coast of Florida, but, you know, Miami and and – Around there, there's a lot of water, and a lot of things found their way. It was the 80s. That's all I can say. 